Let's have a look at how I've tackled this month's project using die cuts and scrap. Hello and welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Today I'd like to walk you through the process of how I have created my corner bookmark and two hidden paper clips. And what I'm going to do is a step-by-step -step tutorial of my process of how I've put this together. And here we are just working with scraps today, just gluing down on a piece of paper. This is a thicker piece of paper, uh, sort of similar to watercolour paper, but it is brown. I'm using YooHoo glue stick here. I find that that is a really good go-to glue. And I am using some baked paper that has been dyed with coffee and it's been put in the oven. So those lines on the paper have been made by a grill in the oven. And that's what I call baked paper. It takes on a whole different texture once it's been baked. You get the, the edging there where there's a discoloration has either been in a pan or it has ch changed colour with the heat. And then it's obviously got some damage down the bottom with different inks and things and distressed in some way. It's just a scruffy scrap. It's a scruffy piece of paper and that's what we're working with. Just rubbish, trash, you know, little pieces of dictionary page there that's been torn up and that was just discarded off some other project and just now being reused for this collage. And it's just so lovely. That is a bit of a vintage map going down there now, just gluing that on, rolling it over the top of the glue stick. It's a good technique. It gives you, gives you a good distribution of glue and you're also not gluing anything else. You can just uh, be be mindful of how you're getting that glue where you're putting it just covering up that bloom mark at the bottom there with this scrap of paper sticking it down I just love working with old vintage papers and scraps as you can see here my scrap tray is full and overflowing just lots of little pieces uh, previous projects that have been thrown in there and um, old torn bits that have come off of past projects and it's just a wonderful resource to throw those things in there, knowing that there's something of interest on each piece. So when you pull something out, you've already made the assessment that you are going to be able to use that for something. Something in the future, like this scrap here has come from a telephone directory, an old one, one we don't really use anymore, the, the yellow pages in the UK. Um, it's not something we really use now. We can look these things up on our phones and it's just a little remnant of time before and that was a little bit of book page there with the the caramel colours of age and the different textures here I'm interested in. This is what brings me interest and joy. That little scrap there with the green was some paint and um, it's got a feel to it, a texture of the dried paint. And uh, now I'm working out whether I want my pocket on the side here, my, my corner tuck, whether I'm going to have it there. And if I'm having it there, what is it going to interfere with? So I'm now moving everything down to see if I can accommodate this corner that's going there. That will be the bookmark for the page that we're making. And then we are bringing in here some possible focal points so I had that die cut there that is um, a poppy seed head but it is from tattered lace um, so if anybody is familiar with these these are the tattered lace die cuts that you can get uh, not always easy to find but I did find mine on Etsy and you can find sellers on eBay great for card making paper craft scrapbooking so you may even find that you have some in your supplies I've got quite a few that I've collected over the years and it's just nice to remember these things and pull them out of your stash that's a little piece of sheet music there, old vintage sheet music. I was quite keen to have the note showing, but I think in the end I, I cover it up. But I just like the different feel and texture of those two old vintage papers. So we've got the book page corner there and then the music paper. And the music paper has a nice silky feel to it, whereas the darker coloured paper on top is this this piece I'm touching here is... Um, it's rough, uh, sort of more porous paper. So different feels of paper, different weights and uh, textures 
they all seem to add something special when you're working with them. And it's nice. It's a, it's a really relaxing way knowing that you are clearing up your little rubbish pieces, your scrap pieces. But each piece has got something interesting about it, whether it's got age spots, whether it's got a musical note, whether it's got a tattered, torn edge, a ripped side to it. Um, a feel of old vintage paper, paper that just feels different. We don't have that now in our daily lives. So it's a wonderful reconnection with materials that we sometimes you know, don't consider. We're too quick. We're fast. We're looking at uh, digital things now. Working through little decisions here, whether I'd like a pop of colour, would I like this green to come in to be similar to the colour that I'm seeing on the poppy stems and um, I'm making this for a friend. This is a piece that is going out as part of my swap and I'm sending this off to a lady called Claire and she has a channel called Purple Poppy and so that's why I've selected the poppy heads here. I think that that's a good fit and um, I'm enjoying playing around with this. I have already deconstructed the poppy die cut so I'm just taking away some of the loose stems there from where I ripped things off before or where I from where I've used the poppy heads before and just having a little play placing the different colored and textured papers behind but I didn't feel that I could talk while I was doing this this is why I'm doing the voiceover now it's just was a nice time to sit quietly and just process what I wanted to just think about the papers and enjoy the craft that is junk journaling and paper craft and just getting lost in the process of making having a little clear up here it would seem I think I'm considering my next move and how I would like to put this do I want this pocket on do I want a bit of fabric something's missing here I think I've got to the point in the project where it's looking a bit scruffy I'm starting to lose faith in the whole process and I'm thinking what else can I add here and then I see this little scrap of fabric which I've just placed behind the poppy seed heads and then attached to it was a piece of map fabric so I thought that, that was great and then I decided that this scrap of fabric, this square here, would look really lovely with some stamping on it. Only I've just done it upside down. But uh, that is coming in there with just some illegible script. It uh, gives some texture and the paint splatters are interesting. And they almost look or reminded me of poppy seeds. And uh, I can use fabric with the Yoohoo glue. It does say that you can. So lightweight fabric is going to stick down nicely with that glue. I do really get on very well with the Yoohoo glue. It's nice and creamy. It's a German make. And I prefer it to the British Pritt stick that we have. It doesn't seem to leave chunks on projects. Um, but with that little piece there, I think I will want my stronger glue and I shall probably bring in a 3-in-1 or a Fabri-Tac. So this embellishment will probably need to have a stronger glue. And I've also just noticed this frame. So I've brought in this frame which has previously been stained with some ink. And I'm thinking now that that actually would look very nice. So I'm just working out a place for that. Do I want it to have landscape? Do I want it to be portrait way round? Do I want it at all? So yes, I have uh, think I've decided that that is going to look very nice if I can only sort out where it's supposed to go and um, I, we're going to have it. So I'm gluing it down using three in one glue there and that is because it's got a slightly narrower nozzle to it and I have run out of my art glitter glue which would be a very good option with a precision nozzle or nib on it you can really do some fine gluing work here particularly if you're using die cuts a glue with a good narrow nozzle would be the best thing that you can get your hands on you can buy little bottles that you can decant glue into uh, they're very inexpensive from all good craft shops and online stores. 
So um, because I've decided to do that and it's taken a bit of time, just making sure everything's glued down, I'm now reapplying my glue. As I said, art glitter glue or any kind of runny wet glue would be great as long as you've got a precision nozzle to your glue. You will be able to really get that in there. And I do like using the silicone glues, particularly with fine work like this, because if glue squelches out, out the sides of the die cut or the fussy cut you can usually roll the glue off really easily off of the project I'm just bringing in another poppy head there that was cut off from this whole collection it came as one piece but I did deconstruct it so that I could bring in smaller poppy heads onto the little paper clip that you'll see later and uh, then, then the whole thing will match because I wanted poppy heads on two things at least of the set of three things that I'm making here so this is going to be a corner bookmark and this is either going to be the other side of it or the corners going on the top or at this point I'm not too sure I'm still working out how I want to have it so now I'm inking round um we're inking around the edge I've got blue ink on that and I did start out thinking I was doing brown but I used the wrong dauber uh, or the um, I've used the wrong blending tool there but it's looking really nice I like a little the grungy brown blue edge so I've kept that and then because of that color was tying in with the poppy heads I was then having in my mind that I wanted to bring in blue tones for the other side so this is as I'm cutting the edges off there I'm now considering what I'm going to put on the other side is this going to be the front where I have the pocket and um, and then my poppy heads where I've just done that little collage which is really sweet is that actually going to be the back? You know, I'm now thinking that if I put my corner there, anything hanging off of the corner is could interfere with my poppy heads. So although that's lovely, when it goes on the page, I'm actually going to be hiding that work that I've just done. So I'm now thinking whether it might be better to put that corner on the back and go again with something else on the back there. So this is what I'm just thinking, whether I need to make that a bit shorter. Now, with that blue tone in mind, I'm looking at map, thinking, well, if the sea is blue, that could work. But I'm not liking that one because it's only half of a country and I thought I would like more of a world map image. So I think I start looking at the pages, different options. And the one in the background there would be perfect. Looking at it now with a with an extra pair of eyes, I could see that actually the one says Pacific Ocean straight away. That one would be lovely, but I've I've gone past it. Probably noticed it. Thought now that will be for another project. So having a look and seeing where are we going? Where are we going? That's a good one. What's that one? Looks like Australia. Am I going to go with it? <laughs> Yes, that's perfect. So I am going to take that page and I think that that would be a good base page. The project is Vintage Adventure, so it looks like we are off to Australia and New Zealand on that map. Yes, we are. So that is going to go there. It's a beautiful book that came from a charity shop, The Pocket Atlas, and... Um, it is. A, it was a lovely find and the pages were all hanging out. It didn't cost me much money at all. And when you find something like that, it's lovely to be able to use that in crafts. And uh, it is a vintage adventure just having the craft session itself because you're using wonderful vintage finds, things that um, took a bit of time to consider uh, buying and hunting them down, seeking them out in the first place was an adventure just, just to find the materials to use so then to be able to sit quietly and put it all together is part of the joy the joy of the junk journaling and, and it was junk because the book was falling apart it cost me hardly anything it was a real find in an old junk shop and now I am creating something and honouring that book page, looking at the difference in what a modern map would look like. Things are sometimes called different things when they're from a different era. That is a scrap of um, a scrap of dictionary, but it is Spanish dictionary, so that gives a foreign text and. Uh, 
adds to the element, adds to the idea or the sense that this is somewhere else, that um, maybe we have gone somewhere because we're seeing a foreign text, or it would be to the person receiving that in the UK, unless they are fluent in Spanish. So that's another vintage page. And I'm just wondering whether I should wrap it around, which would give a nice edge, but it doesn't add anything to the back because it's a completely different colour paper. So I decide that I think it's best to cut it away. And it's all these little decisions that you make when you're putting something together. So I'm just, am I sure? Do I want my side tuck on there? Do I want my bookmark to to be on the other side? I'm just thinking round and thinking, OK, so maybe that will be the other side of the page. You will just see this poppy image. And then that's lovely because the lines could work out and that could be a nice writing space or somewhere to put a list. So I'm quite happy with that. And uh, then the person receiving this could add their own embellishments to it and add some more things. And I'm just thinking maybe I might like to ha have some words, some paint splatters on there. Uh, and I found this little scrap of fabric which has got a really dark indigo blue. It sort of works in the colour tones that I've got in those poppy seed heads. And it's nice lightweight cotton with a little bit of green right at the top. It's not really picking it up in the video here, but it is very beautiful and a uh, light fluffy sort of torn edge there. Wrap that around and then I thought, well, I'll put some words over the top of it to mute down that darker ink splodge. And again, I'm using a good slick of the glue to be able to wrap that a bit around because I can stain a fabric and that would look quite interesting. I might even put some more words over the top of that and uh, carry on the collage on the back. So just removing loose threads and, um, and then I think just to link in some of those paint splodges, I will have some paint splatters later on. And now I'm back into my scraps again, really pulling out some old vintage finds. This is an old magazine print or newspaper. Really, really old piece. Absolutely lovely. Looks great there. But I decide that I would lose half of that if I put my pocket on the top. One last final check. Um, and this is the little paper clip that I've made with the other poppy heads that came off of the original. And that's my paper clip there. Hid two hidden paper clips and a pocket. So now I'm going to have a look at decorating my corner and putting that on the other side over the top of the map. So I'm really enjoying putting this together. I'm now going to put my corner part here for my bookmark so the page will slip in there. And what we want to do here is try and tie everything together as best I can. So I've gone with a poppy head theme there on some old vintage tickets. This is actually a very thick ticket. Well, it's one ticket and it used to be, I believe, it's a train ticket, says third class on it. And, and it's from Ireland, so it's really, really nice to see an original ticket. And on the back, I've got a old stamp and that is of the railway, old railway, Stockton and Darlington Railway from 1825. Look at that, that's really fun. And just some scraps of fabric. So that was a real junk, junky piece on that side. And I love that on the other side because it does link in really, really nicely with this piece. So now to try and tie this together, I'm going to have my corner there and what I think I'd like to do is bring in some fabric, nice texture. Okay, for my corner I'm going to take my silicon glue and I'm going to stick down fabric. So I'm just using three in one, perfectly fine for this piece. And I'm just going to put that there, allow it to go off ever so slightly so that it doesn't seep through because this is a light coloured fabric and what will happen is it will bleed through, soak in and leave a stain. So I'm just going to make sure that that goes off a little bit. And then I found this, which is also another one of these die cuts, which m ties in with the poppies because they're the poppies in flower. So I thought I'd have that front and back. I thought that would be really good. So I'm just hoping that this fits. Let's turn it over. I've been practicing some with some mica paints on that bit there. 
So complete, just working with scraps here. Good, no bleed through, that's nice. And I'll just trim that if I need to. And then I'm going to use some fabric scissors. Trimming away the excess, leaving enough to fold that over. So now I've got some corner scraps, that's useful. Use a generous gluing there, doesn't matter if it bleeds through, let's just pull that over and stick that down on that edge. And the same on this one, bring it over. Trim that. And I think I'm going to have this at an angle. I'd like this shape to come off of the edge. And then I just want to decorate the edge with something. So whether I need to remove some of that card or whether this is going to cover it. But I've got some really nice vintage lace here with a scalloped edge. So I think that would look pretty, but it is really see-through. So I'm going to just trim my corner down ever so slightly just so that I don't see that dark brown. Okay, put the glue on there. I'm just going to smear that glue along and then put on the lace. Like that. Cut it straight like that. And then I'm going to wrap those corner parts over here and here and just fold those in. That's it. And then that's going to come and live there. Where I've got my thumb here was just a marker where I didn't need to glue. Making sure that I go right up to the edges. This is perfect for a precision nib art glitter glue like I've mentioned before, especially on these die cuts. Look at that detail. You want everything stuck down. And um, really being generous here because I want this to remain where it's put. I'll just do a little bit coming in because I think that's going to attach to the lace. Half on half off to give this l nice fluid edge and this is silicone glue so it will roll off in a minute when it's dry. Now I might not need stitching, I could get away with it if I can glue this down this might just work out without any stitching, but that might also add as a lovely detail just to have a top stitch and perhaps keep it in a cream colour. So I'll have to go and change my thread. I've got black in there at the moment and I think that that would just be too heavy. I love the vintage floaty springtime feel that this is giving and I just want that edge to be glued down nicely so that, that can come and tuck over the top of a page and be a nice bookmark. I'm just taking some clips and really making sure I get everything. Right, now that's happening, I'm going to take the lace and I also would like some along the bottom just to tie in. Just add a little bit there and just add that lace along the bottom edge. So that's really pretty. And then on this other side, we just get that little detail there coming through. So I just want to make sure that that is sitting straight. I'm removing the clips. This is looking good now. And I think I just want something here. So I'm going to put a bit of ink on here with the darker brown and along the top as well. Just ink around ink around just to blend that all in, give it a framework, just a nice finished edge, brings it all together and down here as well, particularly where there's a section of the map that's been cut off, just nice to bring that all in. That's looking really sweet and what else can we get? I could add a little stamp, maybe two reds, not sure. I'll have a little think about that one and I want something up the top there and because I'm noticing I've got Japan on the map I've got some script here so 
This is on rice paper and it's vintage. I'm going to just take that little element there and put it for a tiny detail. Just a tiny detail. Little something. Just a little something that just makes us feel like we are somewhere different on an adventure. Will be the botanicals are at the focus here as I can't resist adding some botanicals. A botanical adventure. Love that. That's sweet. I um, just seem to want to have this butterfly there I think. I don't know if that's too over the top but it's just nice to see that I think. So we'll use this as a sticker and I'm just hoping it won't look too plonked and if it does I might need to put some little cheesecloth or something floaty behind. How about, have we got anything like that? That would be, oh look that's a good bit. Always something in the scraps unless I use that. That's nice. So it's either the cotton and the stamp or this. Just open this up. Does that look like any good? Interesting. I think I prefer this. I can just manipulate that about a bit. And use those pieces. Keep that bit. Keep that for another time. And we're just going to glue this on now because I've, I love that texture. Okay, I've gone with the cheesecloth, the scrim, the gauze goes by lots of different names doesn't it and then I'm just going to put that down in this corner and that ties up with the lace and just brings a nice bit of movement lovely nice green tones lovely colors there let's just hope that hasn't secured itself down just Prise that up a bit, that's better. Okay. Now, moment of truth, I've got a sample signature here. Okay, so it looks beautiful. I'm really pleased with that. I just want to see that it works. So does it fit as a page corner? Tucking over there like a bookmark. And looks smart, there we go. So a little bit overhanging there, but that's, you know, you just it's very difficult to get up as close as possible. I think I might run a little stitch. I think that could look sweet, but I'm pleased with that. It looks really nice. Okay, I'm trying to attempt some ink splatter here, and I'm just going to see if I can do it this way. I've got my black ink, which is black soot distress ink, and I'm going to take some water. Just add a little bit of water there so that we can get some drops of ink. Load up my brush and hopefully this will be subtle. I'm just going to do that and up over there. I think that will be enough. Perfect. And now to link in the front and the back, I'm going to use some of this fabric. I'm just going to cut a bit. This is the corner that I just took off. I'm going to rip down there to get a frayed edge. And it's just a little fabric sample, which I think could work nicely up the top there. So a little bit of glue up there to add that fabric. And I'm also going to add in some sentiments here quite covered in glue and this one says more I'm just gonna stick that in the ink oopsie didn't mean drop it in the ink <laughs> it's just doesn't matter I'm gonna add that there I'm gonna add it at an angle as well and then I've got the word joy, so I'm just sticking that in the ink just to get the white edges off. A little bit of glue just because we want these to be permanent. And then I'm adding that one in there 
and that says joy so it says more joy more joy bring more joy in let's add in our fabric and then I've just got this bit here which is a little bit lacking um, so I think just to bring more texture in we'll have another fabric sample I do like my fabric samples and that could be trapped in up the top there actually so we'll glue that one in as well when you cut lace off I always try and keep the little ends so I've got things like this just lying about and I think that if I can put that up there then that will also get captured in with a sewing in a moment. Now for this to work the stitching has to be right on the edge so I'll just put that like that. Love it. I just love it. It's a little bit lacking here. I might just see if I can get just a tiny... that's better. That works like blotting paper. Isn't that just so pretty? I'll be back in a moment for the final view. And here we have it. This is what they look like all together as a little set. Complete sort of a nice garden theme as well. Would work with any journal, nature journal, any vintage adventure journal where you're going, where you're travelling. You're always going to see some sort of floral embellishment. You cannot go wrong. Little bird brings in that wonderful springtime or the summertime. Works across most of the seasons. You can definitely change this image up with things from nature it would just be really lovely I just think it's so nice to have this different shape coming off and not just being a straight line and then the stitching if you can see that on the corner there and that's how that's all looking so that was a page flip there and then as we come over this is the other side and it just captures in those little fabric swatches that appear within the work or if they don't they're very similar and that ties in with the cover of the corner so there we go more joy definitely bring more joy into your crafting really settle down have a quiet craft with your scraps and just see what you can come up with you could back your images digital images onto some card you can fussy cut them out you can get all sorts of various cutting tools if you've got such a thing as a Cricut you can get round these things so much more simpler now and if you've got um, any way of pressing out die cuts from your Sizzix machine or something like that really experience um, the fun of working with die cuts in your crafts and try and paint them with some uh, watercolour paints you could even do that and bring your own pop of colour to your journal and have maybe a muted palette at the background but just bring in um, a subtle colour you if you're not sure, if you're having maybe a black and white journal or something, you can just a little, little tones of grey and a hint of blue and purple there. It's just so pretty. And a subtle pink, um, subtle pinks and subtle greens coming in are really nice for a gentle journal. And then if you want a bolder colour, you can, of course, go for a vintage red colour. And so this is how this is looking. And I just think that they are so pretty. They all work together. I'm going to struggle to give these away, but I, uh, I have to because I've said I would. So thank you for joining me as I create a little record for myself of how I have created these fun embellished pieces to go in a journal and become treasured in someone else's special signature journal that they are creating. So I hope that that's been fun and that you have followed along for some interesting inspiration there and that was this month's project and if you tune in on the first of every month to the treasured page if you like and subscribe press the bell icon you'll be alerted you can see what next month's project will be and if you want to join along at home and have a go at making some of these projects you will come out with a very special journal at the end of the year so thank you very much for joining me and above all else just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now <laughs>